Hi, let's talk about Henry's Law. Now, Henry's Law deals with solubility solutions, but there's something special about it. It's dissolving gases into liquids. So I put up here, this is very, very specific for gases. Um, and you'll see here that this looks a lot like a gas law. Um, these are directly related. Let's label everything and then I'll show you. So S stands for solubility. And that's going to be the solubility of the gas. Okay, that's the important part. This is the solubility of the gas. Now the unit on this is going to be some mass over volume. It really looks like a density almost. Uh, but it's how many grams of the gas will dissolve per the liter of the solution. Um, now the P is going to be the pressure. The pressure. Now pressure on this unit, you can use anything. And technically you could use anything here. You do like milligrams per mils, totally fine. You just want to have the same unit of solubility and pressure for the initial conditions as you have for the final conditions. Just be careful to match up those units. Um, so you'll notice as we increase pressure, it increases the solubility, and that makes sense. Um, you and I see this all the time. It's in carbonated drinks. Um, when we put those carbonated drinks under pressure, the carbon dioxide, um, it dissolves gas into the drink. Um, so when you and I open a can of soda and you hear that, psh, well, the pressure is equalizing with the atmospheric pressure, which is lower. Um, and that's why you start to see all of these little bubbles go out, um, go up and out of the soda and the soda will eventually go flat because the CO2 was forced to dissolve by increasing the pressure. And when the pressure decreases, the solubility decreases. So the next time you look at a soda and you see all the bubbles going up and out of that soda, you go, oh, Henry's Law, the solubility decreased. So the gas doesn't stay dissolved inside the soda. Okay, cool. All right, let's do a problem together. Let's say that we have some unknown gas and its solubility is 0.66 grams per liter. Wow, so that's really not, doesn't sound like a lot. You have a whole liter container and only 0.66 grams of gas has been dissolved into it. Well, the question is, well, what if you have a one liter container and you want to dissolve 1.6 grams of that same unknown gas? What does the pressure have to be? Now, I want you to predict. Notice the change in solubility. I'm gonna go from 0.66 grams to, per liter to 1.5 grams per liter. This is a tricky way that they wrote this question. The solubility is going to be grams divided by volume is just 1.5 grams per liter. So notice I'm increasing from 0.66 to 1.5. What do you predict will happen to the um, pressure? Is it going to go up or down, higher or lower than 10? Directly related, right there. If we want to increase the solubility, we're going to have to put more pressure. We're going to have to increase that pressure. Um, so similar to our gas laws, I read my question. We're going to label everything. So we will have S1 is 0.66 grams per liter. P1 is 10 atm. My second solubility, so the new solubility, is going to be the 1.5 grams per liter and our question is what is that final pressure right there um, so then I identify my formula great I know what that is right here s1 over p1 equals s2 over p2 and we're going to solve for p2 now be careful this is in the denominator in order to solve for it it's got to be in the numerator so I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply um, I'm going to do the P2 on both sides. Um, so P2 cancels and let's also multiply the P1. So P1, um, so P1 cancels here and we're going to end up with a P2S1 equals S2P1. I want to get the P2 by itself. I'll divide, divide both sides by S1. And now the fun and easy part is the plug and chug. So P2 will be, oops, S2, excuse me. My S2 was 1.5 grams per liter times P1 was 10 atm divided by S1, which was 0.66 grams per liter. Take a look at our units. Grams per liter cancels, and what am I left with? <gasps> pressure. 
So 1.5 times 10 divided by 0.66, and that's going to give us 22.7 ATM. Did it increase? You bet it did. We went from 10 ATM to 22.7 ATM. And notice, if we increase 0.66 to 1.5, that's over twice the amount of gas dissolved. Look at this, we need over twice the amount of pressure because it's directly related. It's amazing how, how math works out that way. Pretty cool. One of the things I love about chemistry is predictable. Um, all right, if you have other questions, anything with solutions, solubility, look under the playlist for uh, solutions in LeanThink, or you can go to leanthink.org. All right, have a good day. Thanks, bye.